All right. Welcome to Dr. Osborne's Zone. Thanks for coming back, Dr. Zahn. We've got part two today. We talked a, a little in depth last time about microbiome changes and uh, COVID-19 and what was happening, what you were seeing in your lab and your research lab. And um, I'd like to expand on that conversation a little bit more. Maybe we can talk, you know, in terms of microbiome, other aspects of the microbiome beyond viral infections, what you con chronically or, or commonly seeing in terms of things like inflammatory bowel disease. I'd like to dive into fecal, fecal transplants a little bit and get your opinion on and experience on what you're seeing recover and what types of situations you're seeing improve as a result of doing that. So um, let's dive in. Welcome yes. and let's dive in. So, so you, um, you're a gastroenterologist by trade and your, your research lab basically is measuring microbiomes of all kinds of things. And I know you're, uh, you've published a lot of research and you've got a lot of research that's not published. Talk to me a little bit about, um, about how you got initially got into analyzing poop for a living, right? And, um, kind of what led to this road for you. Well, I, it was an interesting road. I think it started uh, early on in my childhood when I wanted to understand where do we go after we die. And, um, you know, I was always fascinated by the process of, you know, dying. Do the bodies decompose and then do they go back to the earth and is there something happening under the earth? Um, so I think that's that was really my interest in going into medicine, understanding, you know, is there a process of life after death, right? And... Um, and then medicine really didn't help me, you know, found that there were a lot of questions that were not answered and also found a lot of, you know, diseases that we were not fixing. So I went into the, the research path of clinical trials with pharmaceutical companies uh, with the interest of really, um, you know, trying to reach a cure with a disease. So, you know, first understanding life, then trying to fix patients and then trying to you know, fix the disease, right? Entity and research was really, it brought me to that, you know, asking questions, you know, why did this product work? Why didn't it work? What could we do better? So 300 clinical trials later, um, you know, about a bunch uh, years ago, we, I, uh, I was always known as the girl that brought patients with C. diff in clinical trials. And when C. diff became, you know, the process of taking stools, from a healthy donor and putting it in a patient with C. diff and the patient cured or improved, and then other things were improving, I started asking more questions. Wait, what's going on there? And then when I saw and on my desk, and of course I wasn't doing any research on that. I was just the girl that pharmaceutical companies were hiring to put products to market, right? So when clinical trials became fecal material in a capsule, and I would get on my desk, one protocol after another, you know, feces from Korea, feces from China, feces from MIT students. I looked at these protocols and I'm like, great, we're in the sh.t business and we have no idea what the hell we're doing. Uh, we're just seeing something, but it's not something that's reproducible necessarily. So I felt that this was like an amazing path to take because when you think about the microbiome, um, you think of these trillions of microbes that are just inhabiting your gut, that are living in your gut, you become a reservoir for them, right? And there's a process that occurs from the beginning of life to the end of life in the microbiome itself. Like I can tell you a newborn from a person that's going to be dying, right, from their microbiome picture. Not something everybody wants to know necessarily, but I, you know, having done so many analysis of stools, et cetera, I can definitely see the difference between a newborn and a person and an old person, right? So when that was happening, I said, I wonder if the process of dying is really these microbes that are your bad microbes accumulating in your body and really decomposing your body and putting you back into the ground. So where do these microbes go after we move on, right? So I think to me, that was the pursuit, the pursuit of, you know, kind of transferring your, your mindset to no longer look at your life as a business or uh, uh, a purpose, you know, to gain recognition, but a purpose to understand 
what is going on and really i think this was a path that you know god brought me to this i i think you know i remember being little asking that question and really that that's been my path trying to understand the mysteries of life and the mysteries of disease and really discovering the microbiome you know and how fortuitous in a way and how you know i always i always say god has a sense of humor because uh you know who put <laughs> You know, who puts the secret of life in microbes that comes out of our poop and goes into the toilet, you know? So, you know, there is definitely magic in poop. There's power in the microbiome in the poop that we, you know, put in, you know, that we release. Um, but there's, we're far from understanding it. Um, but I think this is the beginning and this is an exciting beginning because it really shows the beauty of an intact microbiome that's balanced, that's resilient, uh, versus, you know, um, versus one that is not. So that's my path of discovery. So on that, on that topic of resiliency versus one that's not, what, um, what are you guys using for your basis of, of like, where do you start? Right. Okay. So we have, we can take somebody and observationally, we'd say this person is robust. They look physically fit. They don't have any known ailments. Their biochemistry markers look really good. Do we, is it, is it a matter of taking those types of individuals, analyzing their microbiome and then say, maybe taking somebody with, you know, known inflammatory bowel disease caused by C. diff and looking at theirs in comparison? Is that, is that kind of how well, you? I think resilience is depends on what you're looking at, right? Resilience on what, right? Are you looking at resilience in the brain? Are you looking resilience in the physique? That's like you know that bodybuilder that's building. Are you looking in resilience in comedy? You know, I mean, it all depends. What are the features? You know, we're all different. Our beauty as human beings is in our differences. If we were all the same, we'd be a bunch of robots. So if I come out and say, well, resilience equals A, B, C, D, then everybody's gonna aspire to have A, B, C, D. But here's the, here's the beauty of humanity and how we were created. A, B, C, D only matches a certain population. It doesn't necessarily match the, the other population. So the same way that we have different fingerprints, we have different microbiomes. But the different microbes really guide us into what our abilities are that we're supposed to do on this planet. We're here for a short time, right? We're here to, you know, to figure out something, to question something for a path, right? Seems that my path is understanding the microbiome, right? That's, that's been my direction, my, my questioning as a scientist, um, and a physician who plays with poop. Um, but, you know, there are other people that have a different path through music, healing through music, you know, musicians that have a beautiful music song that heals, um, you know, people that do uh, acoustics, people that do, you know, acupuncture, chiropractors, right? So we all have a different gift um, that makes us who we are so that we add to the world. I'm going to explain you know, who we, you, you, the difference in humanity by looking at, and because I learned that from the microbiome, right? If you take a microbiome that is diverse and has different microbes, bacteria, viruses, and fungi, you're going to notice that certain bacteria need other bacteria to survive, right? It's almost like families. One cannot do what it's supposed to do unless the other one is active. If you kill off that group of microbes that this group of microbe needed, now this group of microbe is not doing what it's supposed to do, right? So it's like action leads to a reaction. You kill one, now you're affecting this one, which is going to kill its purpose and eventually die, right? So now you've got a microbiome that was diverse, but because you killed one group of microbes, you're now out of balance and all the bad guys get to flourish and you know, disease starts occurring and then pretty soon death of the human, right? Because death is really a dysbiosis of the microbiome where the bad microbes are taking you under the ground and decomposing you. Here's the, when you look at um, humanity on the whole, we all have a function, you know? You remove the farmer 
You remove my ability to get food on my table. You eliminate my ability to eat and nourish myself to save lives. You inhibit the saving of the next person's life. So it's all full circle. We all need each other. And so what's resilient for one is not necessarily resilient for another. You know, resilience in a, in a guy who's doing construction is important for him to build up his muscle and, and increase his protein intake, right? However, resilience um, for a musician, it's a different sort of, you know, if I'm playing the violin, it's a different, you know, musculature that I need to develop. And it's a lot of hand coordination and nerve pathways. So I think, you know, when we look at resilience, we have to see for what population, for what purpose, and, and what is that all doing? So it's not a formula that is for all, much like there's no pill for all to fix humans, um, but we could do the best we can. So that's it. No, that makes sense. I mean, just, I, I could see where it's not like one microbiome uh, size fits all. We're all different, unique. What what patterns though? So you talk you talk about like bad bacteria. My my question is, are there bad bacteria, or are there bacteria that are there that are just growing out of control because they've been allowed to grow out of control because one of those others were knocked out, and so now the byproduct isn't going growing. Kind of like when we tried to kill, um, when when we tried to kill all the snakes, the rats got out of control, right? 100%, so that's yeah. exactly the same. You kill your spiders, now you've got a lot of flies and nobody's removing those flies and mosquitoes, right? And then vice versa, you've got a lot of flies and mosquitoes and now you've got a lot of spiders because that's just the human kingdom of, that's just the the animal kingdom of taking over, right? So, yeah. But, so we're really, then it sounds like we're after diversity of a microbiome. So we're after having all the professions it within the city of our microbiome so that they can all get along and work together. And if somebody's pipe breaks, we got microbiome guys that can fix the plumbing. And if somebody's right. electricity goes out, we got little electronic. Exactly. Fixers. 